With the retirement of the space shuttle in 2011, humanity, much like Bruce Willis's career, stands at a precipice. One where we will either live free or die hard. Lurking in between the dark splotches between the stars and planets are gigantic, evil rocks threatening life as we know it, potentially those of our finest B-list celebrities. Tariq Malik, the managing editor of Space.com, writes in an August 14th article that over 1,400 potentially hazardous asteroids have been identified. Considering that former astronaut Ed Liu stated that an asteroid about a half mile in diameter could end life as we know it, nine minutes is a pretty fair trade if we can stop at least one Armageddon. <sighs> Sorry, Mr. Willis. I can't go back and stop the 1998 film. So, let's start the search for our near-Earth problems, observe their causes, and set some launch-ready solutions. We must start by looking for our problems in the most logical place. Up. And realizing, that's no moon! Those are our first two problems. Apo um, detection, or Apophis and detection. The first problem is Apophis, another big-ass rocks in the sky. NASA prefers the more technical mumbo-jumbo and calls them near-Earth objects, which are comets and asteroids that have been nudged by the gravitational attraction of nearby planets into orbits that would bring them close to Earth, because they're just jealous of our pretty blue-green looks. I mean, really, Saturn? Rings? So three billion years ago. Unfortunately for all life on the planet, and that means you... Some of these objects may be on a collision course. In a 2013 hearing before the Commerce, Science, and Transportation Committee, the aforementioned Ed Liu stated that we have only a chance of stopping potentially hazardous asteroids with decades of lead time. Uh, without more than a few years forewarning, the laws of physics would not actually permit us to halt the threat. And as the immortal Mr. Scott would remind us, you cannot change the laws of physics! Yeah. Lou also added that the B612 Foundation expects a one in three chance of an asteroid impacting this century capable of devastating a large urban area. And this is where Apophis comes in. A January 9th Discovery News article reminds us that not only will Apophis be making a close pass in 2029, but uh, which could nudge it into impacts later this century, but it is also 20% larger than previously thought. The same article neglects to mention that Apophis is also the Egyptian serpent god of evil and darkness. This part, uh, this at least gives us an insight into what NASA's current asteroid defense strategy is. Irony? The second problem is detecting these objects. A 2011 report from the Jet Propulsion Lab estimates that they found a significant amount of the potentially hazardous asteroids, including 911 in excess of a kilometer, which they estimate to be 93%. Oh, well, no worries, everyone. Well, that would only mean that there are 70 monstrous space rocks that could end all life on the planet. And we have no idea where they are. Uh, tens of thousands ro uh, of rocks between 100 and 1,000 meters are still lurking somewhere, threatening to destroy large population centers. NASA doesn't bother tracking that smaller objects than 100 meters, so they couldn't be that important, right? Wrong. They're a very big problem. As the... Uh, as a 2013 space article on February 27th explains, the object which detonated over Chelyabinsk, Russia, shattering windows, causing over a thousand injuries, and exposing the residents to a color other than gray, was in this category. It was only 14 meters in diameter, yet exploded with 470 kilotons of TNT. That would be like having a full-grown humpback whale blowing up with 20 times the force of the first atomic bomb. And whether asteroids or whales, Greenpeace is none too happy about this. So after looking back down, I came across a man holding and wearing nothing but signs, who warned me that we are condemned to fiery doom for two reasons. Those reasons were new science and old politicians. But first, new science. 
The notion that a large asteroid wiped out the dinosaurs was first introduced in 1980 by Luis and Walter Alvarez. Their critics spent 10 years debating the theory with compelling arguments like no and nah, and getting nothing done, much like Congress. The Alvarez hypothesis was proven, however, with the 1990 discovery of the Chicxulub crater near Mexico's Yucatan Peninsula. And previous critics linked other disasters to asteroids with more persuasive arguments like, oh, and wait, and the Tunguska event. A June 30th NASA Science News article from 2008 reports that an asteroid 36 meters in diameter detonated over Siberia in the atmosphere, exploding and producing a massive fireball with the strength of 185 atomic bombs, killing life within 800 square miles and leaving villagers fearful of an angry god called Ogdi, believing him to be running around and killing the wildlife. That bastard. To give some perspective, the science that established that a 12 kilometer object destroyed 75% of the life on the planet, has, like myself, only very recently reached drinking age. <sighs> and between monster rocks and God's name Dogdy, that's getting really tempting right about now. But it gets worse, with old politicians. Still busy debating global warming, contraceptive policies, and heliocentrism, the Vatican, uh, Congress, Congress, I meant Congress. <laughs> doesn't take the science seriously. The Los Angeles Times article of March 20th, 2013 demonstrates this when it mentions Texas Senator and Republican wacko beard Ted Cruz's most memorable contribution to a hearing on the danger of asteroids, which was a lament that Bruce Willis had not been called to testify. This comment not only reflects a misplaced levity, but it reflects overconfidence in current interception capabilities. I'm sorry, but seriously, head of this committee now? The same article goes on to quote Joan Johnson Fries, of the, a professor at the U.S. Naval War College, that says, with a lack of understanding mixed with a bit of Hollywood magic has basically convinced the American people that if there were ever a problem, we would take Bruce Willis, strap him to a nuke and an American flag, and have him go fix it. Well, even if that were true, we've only got one Bruce Willis, and he's not getting any younger. So, I glanced away from, uh, from the doomsayer for some solutions, but was disheartened to find a March 20th, 2013 article that suggests the most immediate solution is prayer. Yes, NPR says we should pray the rock away. And this is NPR we're talking about, so it's probably some damned heathen god, like Ogdi. Rather than put my faith in that bastard, I've decided to build a bunker that will lock me away from the fiery death that awaits most of you. As with the capacity of the bunker, there are three other solutions. Donations, amateur astronomy, and pressing your member of Congress. First, donations. You can donate to the B612 Foundation, which is collecting $450 million to build the Sentinel Telescope. It will be capable of seeing objects that telescopes on or near the planet can't see. And if you give them $250 billion, they'll make it a death laser, too. Second, amateur astronomy. You can contact the Minor Planet Center, which is a citizen-led network dedicated to identifying and cataloging new objects. Since there are only 100 volunteers contributing to the network today, if you get involved, you can increase its efficiency by 1%. That's math, folks. Finally, press your member of Congress. Uh, reason with them if you have to. All they want is to be reelected, and they can't win, no matter how many super PACs they have, if their constituents are dead. The National Research Council, furthermore, shows that for a mere $250 million, we could fund a comprehensive observation system, survey missions, and tests for mitigation technology. For a little more than the cost of an F-35 jet, we could save the planet. Which is a lot more than that jet's going to do. I mean, it's not like it's going to fly up and shoot down the alien mothership. 
what, I, I couldn't afford Will Smith for this speech. Shh, don't look at me, neither could the Independence Day sequel. So, today we've spotted our near-Earth problems, observed their causes, and set some launch-ready solutions we pray to Ogdi will save us. Come on, you bastard. Let's make that good enough and help me with the inform later. However, until we develop these mitigation technologies, we should keep at least one space shuttle in launch-ready condition, just in case Bruce Willis needs it. <laughs>